Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. I'm T Captain X. Today we're going to be covering the top five assault rifles or top five long range weapons in the game period in Black Ops 6 Warzone because it has changed just a little bit recently. And also because we finally have our loadout AI algorithm website, ggs.ai, fully updated. Shout out to True Game Data for helping us get our attachments up to date finally. Um, so if you want a quick just what's the meta, if you go to the weapons tab here, it's going to show you what guns are defined as meta, what's A tier, B tier, and so on. And from there, if you wanna see builds of those guns, we can click see builds, and voila, we've got a recommended build here for the GPR. Hit the drop down, get our attachments here. This obviously is a gunfighter build with eight attachments, but some of these are gonna just be five attachments and whatnot. And by the way, this part here is completely free. Another thing you can do is you can hit uh, add to chart, and from there, you can go to the chart, and for free users, the time to kill charts, whether you're looking at just the paper TTK or a expected TTK, which factors in recoil and whatnot, completely free to use. From there, we can go to the builds page where we can start sorting things and looking at individual build scorings. Uh, as you can see, we have some recommended loadouts, which are kind of the best guns that we think are the best to use here. We've got an XM4 GPR and a Jackal that are all gunfighter options. If you want to look only at five attachment options, we can click the drop down here and click five attachments. And then now no gunfighter builds will show up. Or if you only want to look at assault rifles or only SMGs or only snipers, etc., we can filter that there. Also filter by Warzone versus Black Ops 6 multiplayer. You can go by game, so BO6 only, MDB3 only, or by very specific weapons as well. And as you add these filters, these weapons should go away, so there's not so many to choose from. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to look at ARs, battle rifles, and LMGs for our long range. And you're gonna see that the XM4 is scoring the highest, and the main reason for that is the new buffer weighted stock attachment that they added for it. GPR also looking quite good though, and in some instances might be better than the XM4, depending on your play style and what map you're playing. Um, as we scroll down here, we've got STG, the BP50, even an MTZ556 scoring quite highly. So there are a lot of MW3 guns that are pretty solid to use, honestly. AK-74, Krig C, got some other MW3 guns sneaking in here, Model L, and we can keep going on and whatnot. One thing I do want to mention is I do think our Model L is maybe scoring slightly low. We are going to make some small tweaks coming soon to our algorithm that's going to give us a little bit more accurate pictures of TTKs, but also to reflect things like bolt velocity a little bit better. Because for example, the Model L, if you build it for max bolt velocity, has nearly a 1500 meter per second bolt velocity, which is way faster than even the best sniper in the game. And bolt velocity is, is we're learning here very easily or very soon that, uh, it is an incredibly important stat for long range guns and it makes your accuracy and hit reg just feel so much better. So some tweaks are coming, but overall I do think our long range algorithm is a uh very accurate. So I've selected six guns and added them to the chart. Six is the max amount of guns that we can compare. Let's first look at the paper time to kill. This is the time to kill of a gun, assuming you are 100% accurate with your shots. Then we've got the range set all the way to 100 meters. The BV-50 you're gonna see in the green line has really good TTKs at close range and at long range, pretty much the fastest time to kill gun here. However, it is not necessarily the best overall gun because of some things that I will explain later. The XM4 in the blue line here is excellent. I'm gonna hide a few guns here just to make our life a little bit easier here. You will see the XM4, very good TTKs as well. I'll then bring in the GPR in orange, which is nearly identical, but at longer ranges, it does start to fall off. The Krig C also nearly identical to the GPR. And then finally, I'll bring in the STG here in purple, a little bit slower TTKs, kind of in, on pair with that Model L, but the STG is a very, very low recoil gun. So if we switch this to expected TTK, which factors in things like recoil into the equation, now you'll see a gun like the STG in purple. It's a lot more competitive. It's actually in third place at these longer ranges. And that's because it's got good recoil. You'll also notice this visualization of the TTK, which is showing you a very simplified one number. What's the time to kill that you can expect to get with these guns? And this number changes based on how we select our algorithm. So you can do big map or small map, which changes things and actually makes the BP-50 score a little bit faster. The reason for that is because small map, most of our fights happen at closer ranges. The BP-50 has a very, very good close range time to kill. You can also change the play style. Obviously, we're looking at this for long range. Changing this to a close range would completely change the algorithm around. We're not going to do that for this, but probably the coolest thing on this entire site. Now, this is a premium feature, but this is the versus simulator. 
What this does is it's going to put these guns head to head in a simulated fight and say which one would win in a 50 50 fight. And it's going to take in different things into account, like the distance of how far you are. Do you have to apply your aim down sight and sprint to fire or were you already pre aiming and where are you hitting your shots, etc, etc. And with this, you will see here, I've got this set for small map, long range. The XM4 is winning here. Now we can rerun these multiple times here and we're gonna get slightly different things. But as I rerun this, for the most part, the XM4 wins, but occasionally the GPR might win here. So there's the GPR winning a few different times there. Even the Krig C starts to win here. Now, if I change this to big map though, the XM4 starts to be a little bit more of the clear lead. And the reason for that, and it starts to win almost every time. And the reason for that is because of that new buffer weighted sock that it has, the recoil is just so good. And at longer ranges, the XM4 starts to be the clear winner. You'll also notice that the MW3 or ARs tend to kind of fall in last place every time. The reason for that is very simple, is because in these 50-50 fights, sometimes the simulator applies whether you have to aim or sprint to fire in your gun. If we go to the mobility tab here, if we look at the, let's look at the aim down sight speed comparison, the, all of the Black Ops 6 guns have very fast aim down sights, especially the GPR. GPR has phenomenal handling for an AR, whereas the BP-15 and SCG, they have really slow aim down sight speeds. And in a 50-50 gunfight, that is extremely important to have. Same if we switch this to sprint to fire, again, you will see GPR is doing great. BP-50, not bad, but again, the SCG really, really struggles in that handling component. Another thing to consider is the bullet velocity here. And this is a bullet velocity visualization and the Model L is phenomenal in this department. It has nearly 1500 meters per second bullet velocity, which just makes it hit scan, meaning you don't have to worry about leading your shots uh, basically at all. And if we go to the accuracy tab, we actually have a hit scan range and this shows the Model L is hit scan up to 72 meters, meaning you don't have to lead your shots up until that range. Whereas guns like the GPR, not nearly as long. And then of course, if you want just a quick overall scoring, we can click the overall tab and these are going to score these. And as we change different things like the map size, these will score differently. And same with if we change our play style. So, you know, balance is gonna be what most people I'd recommend. If you're a very aggressive run and gun type person, this will favor things more like mobility and handling a little bit more. If you are a casual, this starts to really favor recoil as kind of the number one priority. And then tactical is also kind of similar to casual, but it's gonna really favor things like recoil and the long range capability of the gun. So if you guys get a chance to go on the website, if you really like some of those premium features I showed off, if you want to upgrade to iridescent, we do have code. So my code TCAPTNX will actually save you 20% off every single monthly redo. Uh, with the code, it makes it about 12 bucks a month, or you can pay uh, about 100 bucks for the entire year one time if you use my code TCAPTNX. All right, so let's now show off some of the loadouts here. So starting at number five, number five is really a big toss up. There's a lot of different things I would say, but I'm gonna go with the Model L simply because it has that insanely good bullet velocity here. So even on the five attachment build, still have a crazy good bullet velocity of 1116. So this will be my five attachment build for optics on your BO6 guns. Uh, if you want just a clean 1X, I love the Kepler Red Dot. It is a super clean, very wide sight picture. However, two other good options would be the Jason Armory 2X for a little more zoom or the Willis 3X. Just know that as you go up in zoom, you tend to get a little bit more visual recoil and your reticle will kind of bounce and shake a little bit more. For the muzzle, I try to stay suppressed as much as I can, but I do think most people would probably prefer to run a compensator for just smoother recoil control overall. I don't really like the muzzle brake that much, and I do think the ported compensator is a good option, but overall, I found the compensator does best for pure recoil control. Now barrels, I am starting to lean towards going with the gain twist, which is the bullet velocity only barrel, because I just think bullet velocity is so important on these ARs, it just makes them feel so much better. But I do think reinforced is a great option as well. A little bit less bullet velocity, but you get more range. And then under barrels, you have two main options. For most people, you're probably gonna wanna prefer the vertical foregrip, as this does the maximum amount of horizontal recoil. The other option though would be to go with something like the precision foregrip, which will not give you as much horizontal recoil control, but it gives you a lot more aiming idle sway, which reduces that like variance and that bob, and it should make your recoil patterns kind of more uh, repeatable every time you shoot the gun. And then if we are going to put on our gunfighter wildcard here, the attachments I would recommend adding for all ARs, I like to do the quick draw grip for faster aim down sight speed. For the stock, usually I'm going heavy stock or combat stock here to reduce that flinch resistance. We don't really need to worry about mobility too much on a long range gun. And then finally for the fire mods, 
Generally, I prefer overpressured because again, overpressured is going to give us that extra bolt velocity. With this build, once we add it, it gives us that crazy good bolt velocity. But if you're struggling on the recoil department, could totally instead go with recoil springs instead. Coming in at number four, we have an MW3 gun, the STG. Now the STG's TTKs as shown earlier are okay, but really, really low recoil. So it's just gonna be easy to use for everyone. Of course, MW3 guns cannot use gunfighter. So we are only limited to five attachments. A few things have changed. Number one, we don't really want to use the Jack Glassless anymore. That used to be like the meta optic, but now it doesn't give you that extra firing aim stability buff, and it actually hurts our aim down sight speed. Whereas any other 1X optic is just going to give you the optic with no penalty. So you can run the slate, you can run literally any 1X optic you want, or you could go with a slightly higher zoom like the Corio Eagle Eye 2.5. But as we increase zoom, we increase our visual recoil. So it just comes down to preference. For MW3 and MW2, the quartermaster suppressor on long range is still kind of the quote unquote meta muzzle to use because it helps a lot with our recoil, but then also prevents us from peeing on the minimap like a suppressor. For the barrel, I like the long barrel. You also can go with the Bruin Crux heavy barrel to give up a little bit of range for slightly more recoil control. 50 round drum is probably what everyone's gonna wanna run there. And then for the stock, the DR79 combo stock gives a lot of recoil control. One thing I will mention though, is for most MW2 and some MW3 guns, if the stock is not very good for recoil control, any of the foregrips will do quite a lot for helping with recoil control. So I run like the Merc foregrip on a lot of them because it's gonna help a lot with recoil control, but also our firing aim stability, which again, when you're shooting the gun, it reduces that random sway and reduces the randomness to the recoil. Coming in at number three, we have the BP-50. Again, this one has a really, really good TTK, but the handling is not quite as good. Now this build here is an iron sight build. If you don't like that, no worries. I would probably say take off the rear grip and then put on an optic of your choice. We can just go with like the slight reflector. Otherwise, Quartermaster, the long barrel, 45 round mag. And then this is another one that its stock does more for recoil control than the under barrel. So just when you're building these, you have to compare is the under barrel or the stock the better recoil attachments when you look at those detailed stats. Also, FYI, sometimes I'm noticing that the detailed stats bugs out in this game a lot. So if you want to be able to look at it accurately, you have to remove all your attachments and then hit the toggle details to show. So all of the foregrips are going to give you minus 10 everywhere, plus the firing game stability. But the stock here is going to give us minus 16 all around, which I think is better than having the extra firing game stability. And coming in at number two, we have the GPR. If you are someone that plays small map and you are an aggressive player and like to really run and gun, the GPR is probably your best bet because it has such amazing handling, but still also good TTKs, good recoil, all that. Again, going with that Kepler red dot, feel free to change the optic for higher zoom if you want. I'm going suppressor, but most of you guys would probably prefer to run the compensator. Again, I'm going gain twist for the more bolt velocity, but reinforce is fine. Vertical foregrip and then the extended mag two is probably ideal for trios and quads. If you're playing solos or duos though, you can probably get away with just the extended mag one. Now for the gunfighter build, one thing you can do is you can swap the barrel back to the reinforce, sacrifice some bolt velocity to get more range. But then once we add over pressured on, now our bolt velocity is in a pretty good spot. The general rule of thumb is you want your bolt velocity to be at least over a thousand. Uh, and then 1100 plus it starts when it starts to feel really, really good. And then from there after that, we can go the quick draw grip for that faster ADS. And then for the stock, you can go heavy or combat stock. And coming in at number one, we have the XM4. Now this build is a little bit different because the XM4, the XMG and the DM10 are the only guns that have access to this new buffer weighted stock. Now this stock does a massive amount of recoil control, 32% gun kick, 60 horizontal and 30 vertical. So there is just no other attachment that comes even relatively close to this. The only downside is it does hurt our aim down sight speed a good amount. So it's not gonna be as mobile of a build, but for long range, nothing comes close. Now, since the stock is so good, I'd rather run the stock over an under barrel for recoil control on a five attachment build. Um, I'm also electing to go with a suppressor instead of a compensator because that stock does so much for our recoil, but feel free to swap that. Again, I'm going gain twist for the extra bolt velocity, extended mag two. And then for gunfighter, I would probably either keep the gain twist or you could switch it back to reinforce, add the vertical foregrip, add the quick draw, and then finally add over pressured here. And then this is probably gonna be our number one overall long range build.
Now, something I do want to mention is unfortunately COD is going back to these kind of pay to win blueprints and the gumball blueprint here has amazingly clean iron sights. So with this, we can kind of get away with not running an optic because we have this super clean iron sight. The only downside is it does have a like really visual tracers. Um, it's a lot worse looking in the firing range. I feel like in game it's not as bad, but this is what I use because the iron sight is so clean. But unfortunately, it is a blueprint you do have to buy. All right, guys, that's going to wrap things up. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, check out a stream here on YouTube or on Twitch. Also, don't forget, if you want to check out Gigi's iridescent code to Captain X saves you 20 percent off for ever, basically on the site. But guys, I appreciate you. Top SMGs, top snipers, all that coming soon. So stay tuned. We'll see you in the next one.